Oh, it's recording. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, so I have this all written down. I'm really excited to share this call with you guys because we're going to be talking about planting seeds and the process. And I think I have a really good, a really good um, call for you guys today. And I hope you guys can get something out of it. Um, when I would think of the term planting seeds, I would get so nervous and my mind would just go totally blank because I can't even keep a garden going. My husband had a great idea of having a garden this summer and I was on board, but he was the one that took care of it because I can't keep anything alive other than my children and myself. Um, but so you're thinking of a garden and you're thinking, if I can't even keep a garden going, how am I gonna plant seeds and help these flowers grow and help them thrive and become beautiful flowers? How am I gonna keep them alive? And how on earth am I going to get people that want to grow in my garden? Have you guys ever felt that way? Because if not, you probably are now. Um, you guys, planting seeds is not as complicated as it seems. Honestly, it's, it's all about sharing your story and sharing it daily. That's a way of planting seeds. People see that. And that's a seed. They're going to... Um, if you, they're going to see how full heartedly you are into this. And if you are full heartedly in this and you love what you do, it's going to show. We are always told how important it is to add value and passion and meaning to our postings. And when we add value and meaning to our posts, people are watching. You might be thinking, I don't think so, Whitney. I mean, I don't get as many likes as I would hope, or I don't get any likes at all, and no one is commenting on my stuff. And I know that I'm pretty guilty of that. I think that all the time. And um, if we think back before you decide to become a coach, there was someone who was on your news feed that caught your eye. And with all those positive posts, the videos, and the invites to always wanting to help someone, you couldn't help but click on their Facebook page and creep on them a little bit. You didn't, you wanted to know what it is, why are they so positive, what are they doing? They, you were attracted to them. It was, it's like you're, you're this bug, you're an insect, right? And there's that bug zapper and they just cannot get enough of that light and they get closer and closer, they have to get to that light. That's what planting seeds does. See, your posts are that light, and they'll keep coming back to check you out. They might not be liking or commenting on your things, but you are planting seeds. You are getting them to, you're getting them in some way with your passion, and when they are ready, they're going to come to you on their own time, and they're going to, they will ask you for help, or they're going to want to know what it is that you do. Um, here's something that I want you to hear. Passionate people are the ones who keep us watching. How powerful and true is that quote? That quote is actually from a book that I'm currently reading for my personal development called Sparkle, The Girl's Guide to Living a Deliciously Dazzling, Wildly Effervescent, Kick-Ass Life by Kara Alwell. Leba, correct me if I'm pronouncing that name wrong, but so far, I love this book. It's this one right here. Sparkle. Um, I want to share with you an excerpt from the book that really stuck out to me, and I hope that you can get something out of it, too. The most interesting people in this world are passionate. They radiate inspiration. We want to be around them. We are drawn to them, and we often look to them for motivation. Whether they are entrepreneurs, actors, writers, doctors, mothers, or pet clothing designers, they all share something in common, and that is the fact that they love what they do. Passionate people are the ones who keep us watching them. Yes, 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 yes. I had a wonderful experience about a month, month and a half ago, 
um, with a mom that I don't know personally, like I haven't hung out with her, but I've seen her at the school. She drops off her child when I drop off mine. And um, I know that she works at the gas station and we'll make small talk when we bump into each other. And um, <clears throat> I just, I just started figuring out how to work my Facebook, how to run a like page and um, a community group and my personal page on top of that. And I had been trying to figure out how to put more value and passion in my posts because I struggle with that daily and I still do. But it wasn't until I shared a Transformation Tuesday, I think it was, um, post that I started feeling a little more confident because I had a lot more comments and a lot more likes than normal. So I'm also, I was also trying to um, be really a lot better at doing my three vitals, which I, I still struggle with that, but I'm getting better. So that day I decided, okay, I'm going to write down a list of people, of the people who like this post that I haven't seen before. And I'm going to write their names down. And those are the people who I'm going to strike a conversation with. Um, so that's what I did. And that she was one of them. So I just thought, okay, I know inviting is super scary, but I'm just going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her like I would in the gas station or at the school. That's all it is. I'm just talking. And talking doesn't ever hurt anybody, right? Um, so I messaged her, and this is how I approached her. I said, hey, I've seen you liking a few of my workout posts and getting involved in the free group, and I was wondering... Since in November, I'm hosting another private account accountability challenge group, if you'd be interested, would love to hear back from you. And I also made a little small talk about her son, who's also in my son's grade, so it kind of kept the conversation going, and I wasn't pressuring her, pushing her, and didn't seem like she was like, oh my gosh, that's all you're going to talk to me about is this. But it's not how it went. And instantly she replied back to me. But come to find out, I was just like a second quicker than her because she was actually trying to message me on her own to reach out for help from me, which I thought was really cool. And we talked for a while and I opened up to her about my feelings and how I, how what I went through um, and how I needed to help myself and I told her how I did that. And it turned out that she had a lot of the same issues and felt the same way. And um, she had a lot that she could relate to in this conversation. And she just felt a lot more comfortable opening up to me because we were forming together. We were forming that relationship. And like I said, she could relate. So it was a lot easier to talk to someone who knows what they're going through because you went through it too. And from that conversation, we, we got to the point where she was super excited and wanted to try out a program and try out this accountability challenge group. But towards the end of the conversation, she wanted a little more time to think because we all get that. We all kind of get that after we explain the pricing of things, which it's is very common. So don't let that bring you down because she's got that this excitement in her that's the seed that you planted in her that she, she wants to come back but she just needs to do it on her own time um, but I've been keeping up with this relationship I've been keeping up with our friendship and um, keeping that alive and when she's ready like I said um, she's not gonna feel awkward to ask for help um, this is the moment right here that really gave me that drive and really showed me that this is what I'm passionate about. I love helping people and helping them find that courage to want to get help for themselves. And I'm just, um, I'm just super thankful to have that opportunity. It's super cool. And when I look back at this conversation, it, I wish I could show it to you the entire conversation, but I don't have a way of doing that. But it gives me goosebumps. It it just gives me that drive, and I just want to keep pushing forward and keep having this type of conversation with 
50 other people. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to look at my notes real quick. Um, Kara L. Will Leba, the lady that wrote the book that I'm reading right now, she says it best about what passion really is. And she says, it will have a physical effect on you somehow. It'll make your heart race, your blood pump, give you goosebumps, and make, sh make your head spin. It'll be riveting and exciting, and it'll give you an overwhelming sense of joy. In other words, it'll turn you the heck on, which it totally did. This conversation, it just, like I said, when you know you're passionate about something, it's going to give you that drive, and you're going to want to keep coming back for more. And when you're passionate about something, others can see that, and it will inspire them and motivate them. Your passion is the planter and your value in your posts and the way you talk to people and your messages, those are your seeds. A good reminder is that the seeds that you plant are what helps you form with others. And forming is super important, you guys, because how many times have we been taught that um, forming is important because without forming with your clients, or potential clients, it's really hard to become successful and build a business. Building a business is, it's like a race between the tortoise and the hare. So this is, I want you to listen closely because you're going to want to hear this. Building a business is like a race between a, the tortoise and the hare. Steady consistency trumps erratic speed. I love this reference so much because it's so true you see we all have goals and we all really we all work really hard to reach those goals and when we run our own business it's crucial to meet those goals so that we can stay afloat we we put a lot of time and effort and we spend money to try and keep our business afloat and we need to earn that money so that we can keep running um, but when we don't think things through or take things slow, we start to work at a pace that gets us nowhere fast. And let's, I want to talk to you about the hair. Let's take the hair for instance. So say this, the hair is this coach that has the goal of reaching success club. Totally fine. I think we all have that same goal. And it's the way that the hair approaches the way that he reaches his goal. See, the hare works at a pace where the only thing that matters are his own needs. He's only out there to invite, 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 just to make a sale and get that paycheck and, and gets all these discount coaches but never follows up with them and doesn't have a relationship with them. And they're only a sale to him. He might be signing up all these discount coaches at a rapid pace, but at what cost? Down the road, he starts to, to, starts to see his business falling apart because he doesn't have the right people on his downline. And he hasn't connected with them to help push through, push them and encourage them to go even further and maybe encourage them to become a coach and help others themselves. And those discount coaches, they're canceling like... I don't know. They're they're canceling like crazy and they're disappearing fast. So the hair might have the lead, but he didn't get very far. Where when you take the tortoise, on the other hand, the tortoise is the coach who takes the time and it might even take weeks or even months to get to know his clients and those who potentially could be his clients. But he forms a relationship and with them, he gets to know them. He gets right down on their level and understands their background. And he really tries to figure out and pinpoint um, where and where in their life and what he could do to help them in their situation to gain confidence and face their fears and reach their goals. And once this happens, he's able to connect with them on another level, becoming maybe becoming a coach themselves and help them share their stories to help others and is able to create a strong business team. 
So, now we all know how that story ended, right? The hare didn't win in the end. It was the, the slow tortoise that won. Because the hare who was fast didn't win. Tortoise. Oh, sorry, my computer <laughs> almost went off. Um, but the tortoise who was slow, he finished successfully. So I want you to really analyze how you are approaching the business aspect of coaching. Are you the hare or the tortoise? Take the time to plant seeds because it's vital to become successful in this business. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in and allowing me to do this call. I hope you got something to take away from this call and are able to use it towards your business. So thank you guys for this opportunity. I, I hope you have a great day. <laughs>